Welcome to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to shrink flat rides down to just one tile. Here you can see I've turned a crooked house into just a single tile ride and it's invisible. So I've hidden this crooked house inside of this lighthouse structure so that the guests can kind of take a historic tour of this lighthouse. So I'm going to show you how to use this trick. First, I'm going to have to turn on some cheats. I'm going to disable clearance checks, show all operating modes, unlock operating limits, allow arbitrary ride type changes, show vehicles from other track types, and disable vehicle limits. With the cheats turned on, I am going to show you in this example how to turn a circus into a single tile ride. So as you can see, the normal circus, the arrow is always pointing towards the entrance, uh, or like, I guess, outward. So here I'm just going to make a simple circus so you can see how it operates with no entrance and we put it in test mode and it's going to immediately give us stats and then we can open it and as you can see guests are going to enter directly into the circus and that is when the arrow is facing that direction so now i'm going to show you how we can shrink this down to just one tile so the middle tile is where the arrow is pointing so now i'm going to choose any tracked ride so just pick the wooden coaster and i want to make sure the arrow is pointing that same direction so i'm going to place that there and then build the entrance and exit. So now if we try and open the ride, it's not going to work because it's not a continuous circuit. So we need to change the ride operating mode to circus mode. So now we can open the ride. However, the ride vehicle is not a circus. So we need to change that. Now if you go to the vehicles, we're not going to see circus in this list. This is only tracked rides. So I actually need to change the ride type to a circus. And then once that's done, now if we go back to the vehicles, it's gonna show the circus. So we can change the vehicle type to a circus building. Let's make it just one building. And then we can test the ride and it's going to populate it with the same stats as the other circus, they're identical. And then now we can use the tile inspector to move the entrance and exit. I'm going to speed it up, but you basically copy the exit, delete it. Then we're gonna paste it, rotate it, click make usable and do the same for the entrance. Copy, delete, paste turn it, make usable, add some paths, and now the ride is ready to be open. I'm going to make the entrance and exit invisible. And then now, as you can see, the guests are going to get on the ride just like a normal circus and then disappear. And then I use the medieval scenery object to make a mini circus tent. And you can see the guests just pop right in. And then as they exit, pretty similar. So here we have our working circus that has been shrunk down to just one tile. Now for some practical uses of this trick, I wanted to make a historic lighthouse tour for this park and I wanted to have just one pathway to it. So the queue line is also the exit path. So I'll show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to use a tracked ride and I'm going to place it underneath the lighthouse and make sure the arrow is pointing forward. And I'm gonna lower it here, build the ride with the entrance and exit and then use the tile inspector like I just did to place the entrance and exit appropriately. So just copy and paste the entrance and exit and make sure you hit the make usable button. Do the same thing with the exit. And then now I should be able to open the ride, but I want this to be a crooked house. Right now we have twister trains. So I need to change the ride type to crooked house. And then now I can change the operating mode to crooked house, but you can use other operating modes as well, like the berserk mode or haunted house mode. It just really affects the length of the ride. Now we can use the crooked house or actually the haunted jailhouse uh, from one of the expansion packs gives you 16 guests and a 75% bonus on excitement. Uh, kind of a little trick there, but I'm actually gonna use just crooked house for five guests, but I want to make it five buildings so that guests can just come and go and there's not really a big line. So now we can open the ride and it populates it with Crooked House stats. And now I have to build the queue line. Now I actually use the cheat to turn on allowing regular path as a queue so it looks identical. And I'm using the invisible railings and that is something you can turn on in the object selection. So it looks like a normal path. And with the disable clearance checks turned off, it's gonna build right through that wall. And there goes the wall. And now for this cliffside park that I'm using, I actually am going to make the queue invisible here because I have scenery objects for the path. Uh, you don't have to do this, but you can see, I'll show you here that it is going to join with the invisible path, but it's going to be invisible so you won't see that. It just looks like a normal path that guests can use. It doesn't necessarily have to look like a queue. I'm going to put the door back in there 
And now we just need to build the exit path. And this is where the little trick comes in. So I'm going to use the normal path and it's not gonna connect with the queue line because it's a normal path. So we use the tile inspector and we select the footpath and we go to connected edges and make sure we select the edge we wanna connect with the queue line. This will allow guests exiting the ride to then re-enter the queue line and head back up to the normal path. So when we open the ride, everything should work. The ride has an exit path and because it's a crooked house, there is no need for mechanics to try and reach the ride. So it's perfectly fine that no one can actually get to the exit. So here we see the guests enter the ride and they disappear. It's our little one tile crooked house. Everything's working as normal. And because I used five vehicles of crooked houses, uh, for the most part, guests will just be kind of coming and going because the ride can hold 25 people at a time. And then when they exit, they'll just re-enter the queue and head back up to the path. And here we see the guests exiting and entering the queue line and heading back up. So it just looks like a normal path where guests can come and go as they please if they want to go check out this lighthouse. Now, I think this could be a really fun addition to your park if you want a sort of walkthrough attraction or a tour of an old castle or a mansion or something like that. I haven't explored all the possibilities, but I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. But I'm going to show you a few more ideas of mine. So here we have a little pirate tavern that I will hide the entrance and exit so you can see it, but guests can kind of go inside and not really sure what they do in there, but it's something piratey. And then here's another example where I have a pagoda. I didn't really do a very good job of making the scenery look nice, but you get the idea. But here we have a big saloon and I actually put the queue hidden inside of it. Uh, so what we can do is make the entrance and exit invisible and then you could either use invisible queue or use a tile inspector and we can make the queue line invisible. I'm gonna do that really quick. And here we basically have a saloon or show or whatever that's hidden inside of these scenery buildings. So I think it's kind of fun. So now I'm gonna show you a few troubleshooting issues you might run into. So here we have a Virginia reel in crooked house mode. So if we open it, it spawns the vehicle. However, it's not gonna give us any stats because this is a tracked ride in a flat ride operating mode. So what we need to do is change it to a flat ride. So I'll just choose the crooked house and it's gonna populate crooked house stats. So we can open the ride, but riders are just gonna sit in a Virginia reel tub that's not moving. So if we close the ride, let's say we want to make it into a flat ride like the, the Crooked House. So there it is. But I want to make it into a twist, let's say. So we change the ride to a twist and now it's still only giving us Crooked Houses. So if you run into this issue, you need to change the ride type to a tracked ride. Doesn't matter which one. And then pick any vehicle. And then now we're going to change it to the ride we want it to be, which is a twist. And it's going to give us twist vehicles. So now we have the twist and we can open the ride and it's going to give us stats for the twist, even though it's in crooked house mode. The stats are twist stats now. So we can open the ride, but because the ride vehicle is a twist, even if we change it to 3D theater, for example, it's going to change the stats to 3D theater stats, but riders are going to get on the ride as if there's an invisible twist vehicle there. So this is why I prefer to use either the 3D cinema, the haunted house, the crooked house, or the circus. So I'm gonna close the ride and now I'm gonna change it to 3D cinema and then we can open the ride. It's a 3D theater right now, we could still change it to twist, but the ride vehicle is a 3D theater and it's now it's gonna give us twist stats. We can change it back to 3D theater. It's gonna change the stats. So now we can open the ride. So basically the operating mode just determines how long the ride duration is, whereas the ride vehicle determines how riders get on the ride even though the vehicle's invisible, and then the ride type determines the stats. So just to reiterate, the ride vehicle will determine the capacity of the ride and how riders will enter and exit the ride, whereas the operating mode will determine the duration of the ride, and then the ride type determines the stats for the ride. So I hope that makes sense. Here I created some sort of Roman colonnade or Parthenon, just something silly for this example, but I would love to see what ideas you guys can come up with. And I know this is kind of an abstract concept, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, it really helps out the channel. And be sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to show you how to build your very own wave pool like this one, 
or have waves crashing against a shoreline like you saw in the lighthouse example earlier, so stay tuned for more.